So you know that you definitely don't want your vocal mix to sound harsh and tinny like this, right? But you also know that you don't want it to sound obscure like this. So what do you do about it? Like how do you find that optimal balance between clarity and warmth? Well, as somebody who's a sucker for a really nice warm vocal, that preference can be hard to accomplish because what can so easily happen is your vocal just gets lost in the mix. As we all know with everything in life, there are a million ways to miss the target and only a small number of ways to get something precisely right. And it's the same type of thing when you're trying to create or maintain a warm vocal sound, but you still want it to be clear enough. So in today's video, I'm gonna do my best to help you solve that problem. And I'm gonna give you my three-step checklist for really finding that ideal place between warmth and clarity when you are aiming for that warm vocal sound. Now, I also have a bonus tip at the end of the video where I talk about how to use reverb to accentuate this warmth that we're creating. And that's just a nice little ear candy bonus tip at the end. So be sure to stick around for that. So as you already heard in the examples I just showed you, we are working with my remake of Radiohead's song, No Surprises. And again, it sounds like this. <laughs> Job that's slow. You notice how nice and warm the vocal is. Okay, step one in this three-step checklist to get your vocals to sound nice and warm is you want to do some EQ surgery on the low mids and the nasal frequencies. And I'm very, I'm being very specific here because low mids and nasal frequencies are the antithesis of warmth. So let's come over here to this vocal track and let's solo it again and let's just really listen to what's happening here. Uh, uh. For this part, I'm just gonna take everything off and we're just gonna focus on EQ for now. So I'm turning all the plugins off. Full of light. And this is just the dry vocal. Now, I'm gonna say something here that's critically important. When you're trying to add warmth to your vocal, the first thing you should do is not try to add warmth to your vocal. The first thing you should do instead is get rid of the things that are keeping your vocal from sounding warm. And in the context of EQ, we're looking at EQ specifically right now, those two areas are the low mids right here and the nasal frequencies. The low mids I would put between like 250 and 500 hertz, which is exactly where we have this cut right here. And the nasal frequencies are between 1K and 2K. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So when I solo the vocal and I crank this low mid range, right, you get that, that boxy, wonky, annoying grossness that we just don't need, or at least we don't need as much of it as came in in the natural recording. So that's why I did a basically a 6 dB cut in the 330 hertz range, and then I did make the, the Q here fairly wide so it reaches all the way down into 200 and all the way up past 500. Let me uh, get rid of these so we hear what we got. So if you... So we got rid of some boxiness there. The next place we want to look at are the nasal zones between like 1K and 2K. And the first cut here is at 1K. This is where you get that honky type of sound. You look right? so tired, unhappy. Bring down the government. So I wanted to make a cut there and also at 2K. 2K for my vocal, I always make a pretty big cut in this 2K range. As you can see here, it's the biggest one of all of these and it is fairly narrow. So I'm really shooting down this 2K range. So let me boost the 2K range so you can really hear what it's doing. It's that, they it's that tinny don't, harshness. They don't speak for so now let me turn off all these cuts and we'll just bypass the EQ. Happy bring and then there. Down the government. And that warmed up the vocal sound. Now we're not done yet. It's still got a bit of a tinny quality to it, but this is where you want to start. Start with the low mid range, doing a cut in the low mids, and then do a one or two cuts in the nasal ranges between 1K and 2K, and this is 
where you want to start. Now, before we move on to step two, while we're still talking about EQ here, if you have been struggling with EQ, especially on your vocals, then just download the free guide below. I'll leave a link below to my visual guide for fixing vocal EQ problems. And this gives you a visual understanding of when you have this problem, make this cut. When you have this problem, make this boost. It lays it out very clearly and it's going to help you out a ton. So again, I'll leave a link below and it is 100% free. So that is step one. Do some EQ surgery on the low mids and the nasal zones. The second step is you want to bring the vocal closer to the front of the mix and you want to glue the vocal together using compression. So I have my three step compression system that I'm going to walk you through very quickly here. What this is, is just three layers of compressors and I've, I label these the balance compressor, the glue compressor and the punch compressor. The first instance is just a fast attack, fast release, as you can see here, ratio pretty high at around six to one or so, and then just turn the threshold down. And the goal of this first compressor here is to just shoot down the loud parts, because what's happening is the with the natural dynamics of your vocal recording, it's kind of like this. You have spikes, you have peaks. And what we're doing here is we're not trying to affect the tone or make it punchy or anything like that. For this balance compressor, all we're doing is shooting down those peaks. That way, the volume differences from the lowest volume to the highest volume goes from this to this. And then you can just turn up the overall volume if you need to. But that is the process. That is the, the, the utility of a balance compressor. Again, it's just fast attack, fast release, and then um, make sure that it's pretty much only I'm hitting on the louder notes. Down the See, it isn't hitting all the time. It's just when those louder notes pop through, it shoots them down and kind of balances everything out a bit. And then the second instance of a compressor is the glue compressor. Now this kind of glue starts to glue the track together a bit. And for this, you want medium attack, medium release. And then I use this little, uh, what Joe Gilder calls butter compression. I learned this from Joe. And what all, all you do here is you turn the threshold all the way down and then slowly bring the ratio up until you get a couple dB of gain reduction here. And that glues the track together. Now, if you're using a compressor that doesn't allow you to do these weird settings here with the threshold all the way down and a super low ratio, then just use any standard compressor that you like. And the main thing here is you want a medium attack instead of a fast attack like the first one, medium attack, medium release, and then do about, I would say, two to three dB of gain reduction, and this will start to really glue that vocal together. And then finally, the third compressor in this three-step three step compression system is the punch compressor. This is where you're getting the majority of the work, and for this, I love using vintage-style compressors. So in Studio One, which is my doll, uh, in the fat channel here, we have this compressor and it sounds they awesome. Don't, they don't speak for us. See, here's without it. Here's with it. Now, obviously, the volume does increase there as well, but you can still really feel and hear that increase in, in punchiness, that increase in being that upfrontness that is in the vocal. And that is what that punch compressor, that third layer of compression really does. It helps kind of maintain that consistency, which is super important, especially for this type of warm vocal, where you don't want the vocal to be super upfront and super in your face. You want it to just sit in the mix, but if you don't have compression then, then you'll like lose it and then it'll come back and you'll hear it and you'll barely hear it if you don't use compression. So you need to use some good solid compression if you want a warm vocal that isn't too loud in the mix. That way that vocal stays as consistent as possible so that even though it's turned down a bit in the mix more so than what you would hear on a pop song, for example, you can still hear it and there's still enough clarity there. All right, and finally, the third step in this three-step checklist is cut away the highs then bring them back with saturation. So we've already talked about the first EQ that we have here, right? Where we cut the low mids, cut the nasal frequencies. Well, after the compression and then after this de -esser that we have here, I added another instance of EQ. And for this, the main purpose of this was to cut away some of these high frequencies right here. As you can see, I have this shelf cut that is cutting away this entire area right here. And listen to what this sounds like. They don't, so here's without it. They don't speak for. What we did there is you can imagine just kind of a little blanket 
that just got laid over the vocal. Just a little bit to warm it up because that is, I would say the, the component that was missing from earlier when I said to warm up the vocal, you got to get rid of that, that uh, honkiness in the nasal ranges as well as that boxiness in the low mid range. And then the third component here, which we're talking about is you want to reduce those, that high end sparkliness that is, especially if there's too much of it, especially if you use a condenser microphone, if you use a dynamic, like the Shure SM seven B microphone, you might not have to do as much in the high range. But as you can see here, we've just got a nice shelf cut in the high range on this EQ and that warms up the vocal sound as well. However, when I was listening to this in the context of the mix, it was getting drowned out a little bit too much. So what can we do about this? Because I still like the warm quality that we did by cutting the highs. Well, let me show you exactly what I did. This is one of my favorite moves again. First thing you do is you cut the highs like we did here. The next thing you do is you bring back the highs, but not with an EQ. Instead, bring it back with some type of saturation or harmonic exciter type of plugin. In this case, I use the color knob inside of the sausage fattener plugin, and I just crank this up to about 35%. So here's without sausage fattener. And there's with it. Bring down the the beautiful thing about saturation is it is much more efficient. You need less of the high frequencies when you use saturation to still to get the clarity and to hear the vocal. You need less of it than if you just boost a normal stock EQ. So it, it's, it's like a more potent way of introducing high frequencies. So you want the warmth, which we again achieved by doing those cuts and then cutting at the high end, but then you want to reintroduce and um, counterbalance that with boosting the highs on some type of saturation plugin. And then what that does is it reintroduces uh, just enough clarity so that the vocal isn't completely lost and that you can still follow it as the listener. You still understand it still feels like the vocal is the driving force of the song. Now, if you're not sure which plugin to use, then browse through the, the plugins and the saturations or even distortion plugins you might have and see if you can just blend in a little bit of that quality to your vocal. Now, this is especially easy for you if you have a plugin like Sausage Fattener or if you're a Slate Digital user, they've got really good plugins like Revival and Air EQ, for example. Uh, those work fantastic for introducing just that nice little sparkled saturated EQ on the top end of your mix. All right, now, as I promised at the intro of this video, I do have a bonus tip for you. Before I do that though, like I mentioned earlier, I do also have my free visual EQ guide. It's the visual guide for fixing vocal EQ problems. So if you've been struggling at all with really making your EQ on your vocals work, or if you've been like making 27 different cuts and boosts and hoping that something works out and then you end up using five instances of an EQ and it's just kind of a mess, then this is going to really help you get some clarity and some understanding about how to use EQ effectively on your vocals. So I'll leave a link in the description below. It's a free PDF. It is the visual guide for fixing vocal EQ problems. So be sure to download that if you've been struggling with EQ in any capacity. So the bonus tip that I'm going to share with you here is you could think of this as a uh, reverbic delay, I guess, or a reverbed slap delay, something like that. But in any case, let me show you what I did uh, and how I added that to this vocal. So here's what it sounds like, first of all. Bring down the government. It's just a beautiful sound, right? It really helps to accentuate the warmth that is already in this vocal using this reverb. However, the first thing, so we're using a return track here, also known as effects channels in Studio One. And then we're sending it over here by the sense, we're sending this vocal to this delay reverb here. Notice that the first plugin on this return track is a delay. Now this is a slap delay. So it's just a really fast slap back delay. It's at around hundred milliseconds, feedback at zero. And then I adjusted the highs because I didn't want all the super high end. I wanted to warm up the tone. There's that word again, warm. And I moved this EQ cut all the way down to about 3,400 Hertz. So that with just the slap delay, it sounds like this. They don't. And that's fine. But that's not the sound that we want for this because for this sound, we want that slap delay to get really washed out and to get really ambient. And that is why I added the reverb 
after the delay on this return track. So now what's happening is that entire delay signal is going through that reverb and it's creating this sound. They don't speak oh, beautiful. For and then now if you blend it in to a nice normal volume, down just, it's so nice. So that's my little bonus tip for you. Give that a shot, use a slap delay, and then drench that delay signal in some reverb. And it, it's just a wonderful sounding effect, um, especially when you want to use it as this warm way to kind of round out that vocal sound and to give it some space and some ambience in the mix. So that is today's video, my friend. Now I'm just going to go ahead and play this remake from start to finish so that you can get a sense of the final result and then I'll wrap up the video. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Uh -huh.